I was wondering, what is going to overshadow the matchup between the Milwaukee Bucks and the Phoenix Suns? And if you're a casual basketball fan and you're listening to this, this is not some regular season matchup. This is the NBA Finals. The Phoenix Suns versus the Milwaukee Bucks. But guess what? We ain't here to talk about that. Because the people who were supposed to, well, who are covering the finals, they're overshadowing the finals with in-house drama. Drama that's been going on since last July, since the protest, the George Floyd, the bubble, all of that leading up to the election. In one corner, we got Maria Taylor, the new uh, pretty much face of the NBA, of ESPN's NBA coverage. And we got in another corner, Rachel Nichols, who Who's the old face of basketball on ESPN? But she's been, of course, lately and, you know, since pretty much since she's been back with ESPN in 2016. But you have this audio that leaked uh, last July of her pretty much, you know, in my view, saying that she's not taking a back seat to Maria Taylor. They said to me, hey, instead of hosting the NBA Finals, like, what do you do? Do us a silent reporter job for the NBA Finals. Because guess what that would play the way for? Uh, for Maria to do the hosting for Yeah. Yeah. So, I have declined. I don't know what their next move is, but they are feeling pressure because of all of that, and um, I'm trying to figure out like how to just, you know, my thing is that I, you know, I wish Marie Taylor all the success in the world. She covers football, she covers basketball. If you need to give her more things to do because you're feeling pressure about your like, crappy long time record on diversity, which by the way, I myself like know personally from the female side of it, like go for it. Just, you know, find it somewhere else. Like, you're not going to find it with me. And, you know, I, ju I just take it as someone who is just knowing that her time as the it person is at an end. I mean, if I'm being honest, before I even go deep into this, I don't even, I don't watch ESPN. It's, I can't even remember the last time I did watch it, like, just actively. The only thing I watch are the games that are broadcast or, you know, of course, last year you had the last dance, but when it comes halftime, I just turn it. It's, you know, it, I can believe she just do a great, uh, she does a great job, but it's just difficult for me just to sit through any commentary. Like I barely even watch uh, the games on, um, with the volume up. I usually mute it because I just, I just, it's just, I just have a hard time listening. The only time you'll really catch me watching it with volume is if someone is over, or of course when I'm somewhere else at someone else's house, I have no other choice. I don't care to, it's not something that's just like, oh, I cannot do this. But when it's just me, I'm usually muted until about the end when it's like a situation where it's probably like a game winning shot. But that's not, that's not what we're here to talk about. That's not what we're here to talk about. It ain't about me. It's not about me. It's not about the reporting. So yeah, you heard the audio, you heard what uh, Rachel Nichols had to say to um, about Maria Taylor and she was talking to uh, LeBron James' advisor and this guy goes by the name of, his name is Adam Medelson. Adam Medelson is this guy's name. And you know, when you hear this conversation, when you, when you hear the conversation, it just puts in perspective every, it, it, it it, everything to me goes back also to Kwame Brown about he talk about the connections and the circles and you see just how deeply involved Rachel Nichols is in the circle of LeBron James. You know, talking, being comfortable talking to this guy, Adam Medelson about uh, the situation that she's facing at her uh, workplace. <laughs>
Um, a big, the, some big takeaways for me is, of, I mean, even when you listen to what they had to say about Black Lives Matter and the Me Too, you, you heard how they laughed when, when he said between uh, Black Me Too and Black Lives Matter, I'm just exhausted. And they laughed because they're just showing you what they really think about these things behind closed doors. And again, this ain't about white people. This is about showing you that there are a sector of people that pretends to care that don't really care. And that's the big picture that the people who fall for these movements needs to see. This is what you guys need to see. They laugh about this stuff behind closed doors because they're just thinking about how they can come up with a quick buck when it comes to it. They, they're not going home, sitting down, thinking about George Floyd and uh, Amari, uh, what's his name? The, the, sorry, I'm butchering his name. The, the kid who got killed in uh, Georgia, uh, Brianna Taylor, and Trayvon Martin, just anybody. They're not going home for the most part. A lot of them, you know, sitting down really thinking about this. They're thinking about their next angle on how to use it to get something and how to use us, how to use you. That's what they're thinking about. Did my light just go out? But that's pretty much their um, angle when it comes to that and that's and when i heard them snicker about that it just let me let it just let me know everything that you know it just confirms everything that you hear kwame talking about and just you know everything when it comes to that you know there's a circle there are people who, who are connected you heard the stories about rachel you know stopping uh what's the sister name lisa i think lisa saldridge or or was it malika andrews from getting the anthony davis interview that's, this is just what it's about. This is how just a lot of them feel. And and I, and I just find it very, I love that this stuff is coming out because it it's opening the eyes of a lot of our people who fall for these campaigns, these, a lot of these liberals who come out and pretend to care about us when in reality, they don't give up about us. You know that Tupac song. And when I saw the rise, a hero in their children's eyes, now they give up about Anyway, y'all know that song. They don't really care. So that's why it's important to discern, discern the difference of people's motivations. I'm trying to sound all articulate. And that's, you know, I, there's a lot to touch on with the Maria Taylor and Rachel Nichols, but I just really wanted to go at it from that perspective and you know my last point before i get out of here is this is why i always say that pretending to make a difference does not make a difference let me say it again pretending to make a difference does not make a difference espn and all you other companies big corporations who came out and oh, we stand in solidarity with the black community and blah, blah, blah. Well, it's like um, years before George Floyd got his um, neck crushed, there was a guy in uh, New York who got choked out by um, the NYPD. Why wasn't everyone woke and why wasn't Indeed and all these companies standing with the black community then? That's all I'm saying. So when you pretend to make a difference, you then have to 
take it's like it's like let me explain you have to take another step steps that you when you know you don't really care about a movement or a situation you're like oh wait a minute yeah you have to now take that next step a step that you know that you don't really care about and it hurts you because it, 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 it eventually reveals who you really are and how you really feel about the situation. This is why this Rachel Nichols and Maria Taylor thing blew up because Rachel looked at it and she said, they're just doing this because she's black and you got the joke. That's when, when they said, when, when I think Rachel said something in, on the tape, uh, you know, that situation, she was really saying she's only getting this because she's black, which is disrespectful to, to the woman's craft because Rachel, you built your career of black people. Basketball is black. They just do it because they're on television and they can't say what they really feel. That's why you can't pretend to make a difference. You can't stand for something you don't really believe in because you eventually you're gonna have to show your colors. You're gonna have to show and prove your belief in that. Oh, look at my hair, I need to get a haircut. You're gonna have to show your um, belief in that. People are gonna ask you to take that next step. And then at some point you're gonna get to the, you're gonna stop and hesitate and they're gonna be like, I thought you, I thought this is, you know, you're down with the, with the cause. That's why you can't pretend to make a difference. You have, if you really wanna make a difference, make the difference without pretending because eventually you're gonna get busted if you're being fake with it. That's pretty much all I had to say about the situation. Thank you for hearing me out. Until next time. Peace.